those hands. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9, we are told and we're taught from the Word of God, the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked, who can know it? My dear unsaved friend tonight in this meeting, What's wrong with this world today is the broken lives that lives within it. And I wonder tonight, are you still broken tonight in your sin? There's never been a day tonight, there's never been a, a day or a moment in your life's experience where you repented of your sin, where you've came to the Lord Jesus and you bowed in your, you bowed in your knees and, and by faith you received Him into your heart because, friend, tonight that's what you need to do. What's wrong with this world we live in today is this. It's not only to do with the broken lives that's in it. What's wrong with this world today that this world has turned its back on God? That's what's wrong with this world today. This world has turned its back on God. But do you want to know the good news tonight? God hasn't turned His back on this world. No matter, friends, this world tonight, as it turns its back on God, yet God never once has turned its back on this world. And I want to leave with you one verse of Scripture tonight. It's the most best-known, best-loved Scripture that has ever been read. And I believe there's not another verse in the Bible that has ushered more people into heaven and brought people to the cross and brought people to Christ more so than this one. It's John chapter 3 and it's verse 16. And in spite of this broken world and the broken lives that live within this world, here's the message of hope tonight. In John chapter 3, verse 16, we read these words, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we know that God will bless that verse to our hearts tonight. I want to write across that verse this evening, God's wondrous love for us. That's what it is tonight, God's wondrous love for us. John 3, 16 tells me about, a lot about God's wondrous love to us. First of all, it tells us that God's love is extravagant. It's extravagant because John 3, 16 doesn't say, for God loved the world, it says this, for God so loved the world. The good news of the gospel tonight is God's love is extravagant. For God so loved the world. There's one thing you and I could never do tonight, and that's measure the length, the depth, the height of God's love tonight. Because God's love has been so great God's love has been so great tonight, no man or no woman could, could ever measure the depth or the height of God's love this evening. God so loves this world tonight, God cannot bear the thought of turning His back upon this world. My dear unsaved friend tonight, God so loves you tonight that He doesn't want you to go to hell. God so loves you tonight, He gives you this opportunity to come to His Son, the Lord Jesus. God so loves you tonight that you're in this gospel meeting. That's how much God loves you. In the early days of my ministry, I remember a girl in a church, she, or sorry, a, a girl in the church who was sharing her testimony, telling the congregation this story. When she was 16 years of age, she, she lived in the city of London. She lived there as a prostitute. 
But she got wonderfully and gloriously saved, and to get away from it all, she moved over to this wee province of ours. The church she started to attend, in that church there was a quiet, shy sort of a person who never really bothered with girls much. She had a wee bit of sense, that road. But once this girl started to attend, and how she began to attend these meetings and the prayer meetings and all, not only was she beautiful to look upon, but she had a real zeal for the Lord. Well, he asked her out, and like myself, he was head over heels in love in no time, until one day he decided, let's go for the first ring. Well, the day they went they left home, they were heading down to Belfast to get engaged and to pick a ring, but he knew that she was very quiet on it, and she wondered what was wrong. He wondered what was wrong. They pulled into the lay-by, and he says, there's something not right here, there's something not, there's something not right, there's something very wrong. You're not yourself, what's wrong? He say, she said to him, I haven't been completely honest with you. And I have to be honest with you if we're going to live a happy life together. You see, what happened was she didn't tell him what the, the life that she lived before she was saved. She didn't tell him what she had done before she came to Ireland. What she did do, she did tell him that day as they sat in the car together. With a voice trembling, she told him everything. Tears began to stream down his face as her heart broke because of what she done and the pain that she has caused him. For a moment they sat for quite a moment they sat and they wept together and cried together and couldn't speak until he spoke first. And I loved what he said. She says, do you know what he turned around and said to me? This is what he said. In spite of the life that you have lived, what you've done, I still love you. Both of them continued on to Belfast that day, got engaged, and a couple of years both of them got married and have a wee family and sat up home together. But so great was his love for her, in spite of what she was or who she was or what she had done, he still loved her to marry her. That's the extravagant love of God this evening. In spite of what we have done, God loves us. And God loves us so much, for God so loved the world. I want you to notice, secondly, in that verse, there's something else about the wondrous love that God has for us. God's love is not just extravagant. I want you to notice something else about that love. His love is extensive because it says, For God so loved the world. Do you know something tonight? There's not one part of this world that God's love cannot reach. There's not one part of this world tonight that God's love doesn't touch. God's love touches every part of this world of ours. Do you know something tonight? God's love can touch the darkest areas of this world. Corrie Ten Boom was preaching in Munich. For those of you, maybe perhaps for some who doesn't know Corrie Ten Boom's story, she spent a number of years in a concentration camp under the cruel control of the Nazis during World War II. Her sister Betsy had died in that camp, and through some clerical error, finally Corrie Ten Boom was freed. In Munich, she was preaching on the forgiveness of God. And as she was shaking hands at the door, she noticed a tall man coming towards her, and suddenly she could see the Nazi uniform that was upon him. He wasn't wearing his Nazi uniform, of course, 
But as soon as she saw him, that's how she remembered him, because she said he was one of the most cruelest guards that was there. In fact, the acts of brutality that he acted out was evil. He put out his hand and to Corrie's hand and asked Corrie to shake his hand. And Corrie Ten Boom says, the very blood froze in my veins. He said, you know, I have been arrested. I was arrested. Not for my war crimes, something worse, my sin. And I was arrested by the love of God. And this one-time cruel guard who was so brutal to the Jews during those years, repented of his sin and trusted the Savior. Corrie Ten Boom heard the voice of God speak to her heart in those moments, and this is what he said. Corrie, I have forgiven this man for all that he's done. Now you must forgive him. As she stretched forth her hand and put that hand into his hand, she says, the love that came into my heart for him was so immense, and his love for me. And here was a man, she said, who was so wicked and cruel, filled with love because he knew the love of God. What John 3, 6 tells us tonight is this. God's wondrous love to us is so extensive this evening. Nobody is beyond the reach this evening of God's amazing love. For God so loved the world. God's love for us is not just extravagant, I can assure you. God's love is not just extensive. I'll tell you something now, my dear friend. God's love is expansive. Because John 3, 16 tells us that God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. My dear friend tonight, that's the cost God had to pay in love for your never-dying soul, that He gave His only begotten Son to die on an old, rugged, cruel cross, to allow Him to be delivered into the hands of wicked men, to be taken, to be stripped, to be crucified, and to die for you and for me. Billy Graham, the great evangelist, told the story of a man and his son and his son's friend in a boat. Away out in the Pacific Ocean, the boat got tossed in a storm, and both young boys were cast in the sea. He had only one lifeline, this father, and two, uh, two boys were in the sea. There was a son and a son's friend. This man's son was saved. He knew the Lord Jesus, but his son's friend wasn't saved. He had to make a choice of which boy to throw the lifeline to first. He couldn't bear the thought of his son dying, but he he couldn't bear the thought of the son's friend dying without Christ. And in love, he threw the lifeline to his son's friend. As a result of not getting his friend in soon enough, his own son went beneath the wave was never found. Tell me this tonight. Could you give your young son up 
in order to save his friend. Because one thing the Bible teaches tonight concerning God, he who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. God's love is extens extensive tonight, but God's love is expensive. It cost God the blood, the life of His Son in order for your immortal soul to be saved tonight. You look to the cross. You look to those bleeding hands. You look to that brow that was crowned with thorns. You look to that bleeding form of one tonight. That's how expensive God's love is and was for this world that He gave His only begotten Son. You see, God's wondrous love to us is so extravagant, for God so loved the world. God's love is so extensive that He loved the world. God's love is so this evening expensive that He gave His only begotten Son. But God's love tonight is explainable because this is what John 3.16 said, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. That explains God's love tonight. God's wondrous love for us tonight is explained. Why? That whosoever believeth on His Son that He sent should not perish but have everlasting life. I love the scope tonight of that text, whosoever. Don't you tell me tonight it's limited atonement because it's not. Whosoever tonight can come. Whosoever tonight must come. That's the message of the gospel tonight. Whosoever believeth. You see, that's the step in the text. Believeth in him. Earlier on in the year, I was asked to take part in a funeral service. And at that funeral service, there was a man who listened to me. All I'd done was read the Scriptures and pay a wee tribute to the person who had passed away. The gentleman who was there, he was a, he's a brother of this lady who had died, had asked me to go out and see him. The other week I went down to see him, and he said, I want you to take my funeral. This man's not a Christian. He says, I want you to come round and make arrangements. So I went round the other evening. I sat down, we talked over, and says, I hey, now, you want me to take the funeral? Yes. I want you to do everything, the house, the grave, and all that. Well, I says, I'm very honored. But I says, let's make, talk about preparations now for eternity. Tell me this, I says, have you ever considered what happens after death? Because we need to make plans for that. This is what he said. I've never done anybody any harm. I've always done me best. I think God will accept me just the way I am. He says, excuse me, sir, he won't. He won't. And I explained to him that's why he sent his son into this world to suffer and to bleed and to die in an old rugged cross because you can't save yourself and you're not good enough. I went on to explain to him what Jesus said. He says, I like said to him, I says, now listen, no man cometh to the Father, Jesus says, but by me. That night before I left, I left him a little booklet by Noel Grant entitled, Let Him In. And says, hey, Robert, before you go to bed tonight, you read that wee book because there's something you must do to earn and to be in heaven, and that's to trust in Christ. Maybe you're here tonight and you think you're good enough. I can tell you now tonight you're not good enough. The cross says you're not good enough because Christ had to die. 
Maybe you feel, well, I am who I am. Well, it doesn't matter who you are, but the Bible says you are a sinner in God's sight, no matter what you say or think you are tonight. What you have to do tonight is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved in repentance of your sin. You must turn away from sin and ask Him to come into your heart because there was no other good enough to pay the price for sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven to let us in. God's love is explainable. You should not perish tonight because the Son of God has died. But here's something else, and I'm finished. God's love is eternal, but shall have everlasting life. God's wondrous love for us, my dear friend, does it not tug your heart tonight? Where will you be 100 years from now? Because 100 years from now, you'll either be in heaven or hell. But God's wondrous love tonight tells us this. He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Nobody could ever love me, and nobody could ever love you as much as God loves you just tonight. Will you come to Him? You must come to Christ. And let's take a wee moment and bow in prayer. You know, tonight there's only a breath between you and death this evening. There's only a blowout in the wheel between you and eternity. You trust the Savior this evening. It's an awful thing to know that God loves you and you throw that love back in God's face. Be serious tonight. Think of what God has done for you. And take His Son as your Savior. And Lord, tonight we commend the issues of this meeting to Thee. And Lord, tonight if there's any in this meeting tonight that's not prepared to meet Thee, I pray earnestly this evening. Give them deciding grace and saving faith, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 292, please.